Hi everybody, welcome back. Today I'm going to talk about horizontal rules, which are little bits of HTML code that you can put on your Canvas page, and this allows you to separate content into sections. Now if we take a look on the page here, I have some dummy text and I have a couple of horizontal rules. One of them isn't actually a true horizontal rule, and the code for that is an HR within angled brackets. But for this first one here, I actually have an image of a dotted line. And then for the second one, I used code. And take a moment, see if you can recognize the difference between them. At this resolution with the full screen, you probably can't distinguish one from the other. However, if I minimize this screen and if I start changing it around, then you can see the content shifting. And then you can tell the difference between this first line and the second line. With the second line, the horizontal rule using HTML and CSS code, all those dots are the same size regardless how big the screen is. And they just adjust. There be, there's more dots if the screen is bigger. And then when the screen is smaller, then there's simply fewer dots. But the dots are the same size. For this other one, this is an image. And there's the same amount of dots, whether it's a big screen or small screen. But then you can see how it changes. If I adjust the screen here, then when it's full screen, then it looks normal, but then it has to shrink down. And so that's why you don't want to put an image to separate the content, you can just use code. And today we're gonna to talk about how to do that. So you have access to this page, the link is in the description below. You can go to this page and copy the code on the page. A regular HR is going to look like just a very thin line, a thin black line. And I'm gonna show you various ways to style it. So let's go into the code here. I'm gonna edit the page and let's hop over to HTML because that's where you work with the horizontal rules. And you can see here's my dummy text and then instead of an HR, I have an image. And so I upload an image that was actually just a screenshot of the HR. And so you can see that the width of the image is 100%. Now I do want it to be 100% instead of a fixed pixel value because for example, let's go ahead and delete this height and change the width to maybe something fixed like 800 pixels or something. I'll go ahead and save that page and then we can see the difference. So from this view, it doesn't look any different. However, when I minimize the screen, then you can see that it looks very similar to that second one. The dots are all the same size. However, if I scroll down to the very bottom, here's a preview of what we're gonna look at, you can see that I have to move the width all the way over because it's 800 pixels wide and so 800 pixels on a small screen goes way off the screen and so you can see all of this room right here. And so you'd really just want to have that be a percentage. You want it to be 100% the width, but then as I showed you initially with an image, that doesn't quite work right. And so I'm gonna go ahead and change this to percentage, 100%, and let's get back into the code. You can see the other HR is just a styled horizontal rule. And so I have the HR. If I just have HR like this, that would just be a normal line. And then what you do is you want to incorporate some CSS, inline CSS. So we're gonna style it. So you go style equals, and then the quotation marks, put all your values in the quotation marks. In my case, I have a border on the top, it's five pixels. So you'd put border top, and then you'd put how thick is it, is it solid? Is it dotted? Is it dashed? You can specify that right there. And then is it a specific color? So mine is a grayish color. I didn't want it to be black. I didn't want it to be gray. And so that's the code that I have for that dotted horizontal rule. So as you're typing out your horizontal rule, you can start just by going HR and that'll just put a dash and then you can add whatever styling you want. Now let's talk about the various stylings that we have. So again, a regular HR, that's just gonna give you a thin black line. And then we're gonna start to style it a little bit. We're gonna put a border, it's one pixel, solid, and it's gray. And so that's slightly different than a regular HR. Not much has changed though. Here's an alternative to style one. In this alternative, I still have it one pixel, it's solid, it's gray, but the width is only 66%. So instead of taking up the entire width of the screen, it takes up two thirds of the screen. And then I put a margin of auto, and that means that there's gonna be equal space on the right as the left. So it essentially only uses two thirds of the screen, and half of one third would be on the right side, half of one third would be on the left. In other words, this is one sixth from the edge to the start of the horizontal rule, and then this would be four sixths, 
and then this would be one sixth to the right. And let's minimize this now and take a look at when the screen is small, you can see that that horizontal rule doesn't quite go out to the edges. It's only two thirds. And then if I adjust the screen, then you can see that adjusting as well. So the horizontal rule gets larger. It still only takes up two thirds, 66% of the width, and then it's centered. So now let's play around with some other things. Here's style two. For this style, I have the border top. I have three pixels instead of one pixel, and then I have it in a double line. And so let's go ahead. I'm gonna zoom way in so that we can really see that in detail down here. Okay, so this is three pixels tall, and it's a double line. And then I choose the color. You can see that the color is kind of a grayish color. It's not black, it's just gray. So let's get back here. I have the same color down here, and this time I did a dashed line. And I made a mistake. Let me just correct this in front of you. This is one pixel, but I know that that's more than one pixel. That looks more like four pixels. So let's go ahead and correct that. I don't mind making a mistake in front of you because you're all my friends. All right, so this is style three. We're gonna go back to style three. Let's take a look at what's really going on. That's more like five pixels. All right, so there's five pixels. Let's play around with this real quick. I'm not gonna keep this change, but for now, let's take a look at what that dashed line looks like when it's 15 pixels. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. And here's the dashed line at 15 pixels. We saw it at five pixels a moment ago. This is 15 pixels, and you can have it as much as 100 pixels if you'd like. That's not going to make a very good HR, but you have that option. I don't think I've ever had an HR that's more than like three or four pixels, but we're just playing around just to see what it looks like. All right, so again, this is what a dashed line at five pixels looks like, and this is a grayish color. You can choose whatever color you want. Just grab a color from the internet. Now, style four, this should look familiar because this is the same code that I used up in the beginning example. And so this is also five pixels, just like our dashed line, and this one's dotted instead of dashed same color. Now this next one, style five, is similar to style three. I have a dashed interaction. This one's eight pixels instead of five pixels. I wanted to blow it up so that we can really see what's going on here. And I chose a different color. And so in this case, the dashes are green, but then I also put a background color and I put pink. And those are silly color configurations. I just wanted to really accentuate the difference between what a background color is and what the actual dashed line is. And then I did the same thing, except for I have dotted instead of dashed. And I put that as 10 pixels instead of eight. But you can see the background color and the horizontal rule color are the same, but then you can really see the difference between a dash and a dot. And you can come up with your own color configurations. So earlier here, we were looking at border top, and now we're going to explore border top, but also border bottom. And so for the border top, I have uh, one pixel, it's solid, and just eyeballing it, I think that's at least two or three pixels probably. I just need to make that change. And then the bottom is also solid, but it's a different color. So let's blow up the screen a little bit so that you can really see the difference between the top and the bottom. The top one is pink, the bottom is green, and you can make those whatever colors you want. What would be an interesting effect if you, is if you made those shades of gray. And I didn't think about that. Let's do that real quick. I'm going to take a couple of different colors. So I'm going to grab this color and then I'm going to grab this other gray. And let's replicate style seven and let's do it in two shades of gray instead of, because I wanted to really have contrasting colors that really stood out just to, just to have an example of what they are. But yeah, let's go ahead. I'm going to copy this. So let's call this style seven alternate. And then I'm gonna swap out the colors. And as I suspected, those are four pixels, not one pixel. So let's go ahead and save that and see what we have. Yeah, so in reality, this alternate seven, that's actually pretty classy. You have two different shades of gray. If I zoom way in and let's scroll down, then you can see that actually looks nice. This first one was silly just because I wanted to show the contrast. But yeah, this one's pretty nice. And of course, I probably in real life wouldn't make that four pixels. I would probably put that down maybe two pixels. Two pixels could look nice. Now styles eight and nine are similar to seven. In fact, they're similar to five, six, and seven. I have two different colors, and then I have the dashed line right here. So they're five pixels tall, it's dashed, and then there's a color. That first color is gray. And then on the bottom, I have five pixels, and it's dashed, and then I have a green color. And for style nine, I did exactly the same thing, except for I did make it a little bit bigger. 
and then I changed it to dotted instead of dashed. And you can have one, like the top be dashed and the bottom be dotted. You can play around with that, see if you want. This last one, the Style 9 Alternative, it's exactly the same thing, except for I put a background color. And of course it looks odd, the color scheme looks odd, but the concept is that you have that flexibility. And then Style 10 is similar to what we explored earlier, where you can have double, you can choose the pixel size. So before I leave you, I want to say one more reason why I don't use images for my horizontal rules, why I like to use coding, and that's not only because it looks better on small screens and it adjusts depending on your screen height, but also I feel like horizontal rules have a purpose, and that's to distinguish content. That's to create separations in your content, and that's a purposeful thing. And if you think of screen readers, Screen readers actually detect horizontal rules and they indicate to the students that there's a horizontal rule and that's an indication that we're separating the content. And for imagery, most of the time I really like imagery to be decorative and it doesn't really have structural or semantic purpose in terms of the web development portion of, of your Canvas page. Now pictures can be meaningful, you can apply alt text and it can help to embellish the content or elaborate on the content that you have on the page. But pictures and imagery have a different function than the horizontal rule in terms of code. So don't upload a picture and have that be an HR, just create your own HR and have fun. Explore the different settings and come up with your own types and styles. Now I do want to hear from you also um, this is basic CSS and basic HTML. If you would like to learn more about more sophisticated things you can do with HRs, we can get into the theme editor and explore that. If there's interest, just reach out to me or leave a comment below and let me know that that's something that I should explore with you. You will have to have access to your institution's Canvas theme editor or work with somebody who has access to that, but you can do some really sophisticated things with horizontal rules. And also, if you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel. I have new content coming out all throughout the summer. I enjoy having you with me on this ride. So don't forget to subscribe, but also like this video and hit that bell for notifications. And as one last aside, uh, it's been great seeing people. I've started going to conferences again this month, and it's been great connecting with you. Thank you for your feedback. Thank you for your encouragement. You all know who you are. And let's keep on rocking and rolling in our classrooms. Until next week. Happy Digi Nanonin!